So the question is, how many times have you come home after an awesome day's bit of filming, you put all your content inside of your editor, such as Premiere Pro, you look at your footage and you just go, I didn't set the correct white balance in camera. And everything has got this horrible blue tinge to it or this horrible yellow tinge to it because you just didn't set the correct white balance in camera when you were filming. You think the content is ruined, you can't color correct it correctly or anything and you just think, what a waste, I'm gonna have to throw that footage away. Well, my friends, I'm gonna teach you a very, very simple trick. One button inside of Premiere Pro can save you from all of that stress and struggle. So if we look at this shot right here, basically we can see that this shot looks a little bit too yellow. It doesn't look quite right. And I've got the same mug here. And as you can see, this mug is basically perfectly white. Looking back at this shot now inside of Premiere, we can see that it's got this yellow tinge to it. So how are we gonna fix that? It's very, very simple. So basically let's just start with the mug one. If we click on color here, we can literally go over into the color editing space of Premiere Pro and as you can see the mug is slightly yellow now we're not going to go into color correction we're not going to go into exposures and all that sort of stuff because yes this is slightly blown out here we can see that we're kind of hitting these hot spots here that's basically because there was a window behind us we had a reflection but ignoring that we just want to get that perfect white balance what do we do on the right hand side here we have this section which is called white balance and you might have done it before where you might be sliding these things around trying to get that perfect white balance not quite working out doesn't ever quite look right if we double click them if you ever move these sliders around just double click them they go back to zero basically where it says white balance selector click that and then you just choose something which was white in shot and we know that that mug was white so we click white and that's it we we've clicked the mug with one button we've now got pretty much the most perfect white balance we could have asked for and as you can see it hasn't done some weird trickery behind the scenes and you can't go in and edit it it's literally just moved those sliders around which we were doing just a second ago so we can reset them again all you have to do is click the little ink dropper tool i don't even know what the official term is for it we say the mug we click it it's done its job and automatically we've got this amazingly looking shot with the perfect white balance so moving on to this shot here as we can see it's got this horrible blue purple hue to it, it looks too cold and just doesn't look right again and how do we fix that go over to the white balance section we click this little is it called an ink dropper i think it's called an ink dropper <laughs> and we choose something which was white in shot for instance i know that the surface this camera was placed on was white it shouldn't be this purpley bluey color so all we have to do is click there boom as quick as that we have now got the like the perfect white balance again in post without having to stress and struggle trying to work out how to change the white balance on all these different you know color wheels and stuff trying to sort out all of that all it is is that one simple button and again let's look at this shot here and as we can see it's got that horrible bluey purpley cold tinge to it what do we do because there's no white in shot the sofa's not white the controller's not white the game case isn't white what do we do we want to find a nice neutral color like a neutral gray color we go over to the white balance section again we click that we choose something which is gray which is the sofa right here which is where i filmed that shot we click gray as quick as that one button no stress no struggle we have now got like the perfect white balance and finally i want to show you the same trick but how do we balance the colors between two different cameras for instance a sony and a canon camera one might be too cool one might be too warm switching back and forth between those shots might just look a little bit too distracting for the audience and you can tell that it's basically been filmed by two separate cameras so let's jump back into premiere pro right here this shot which you're seeing here was filmed on the Sony FS700 and it's a nice neutral and natural type of color. We've done this in camera. Now this shot here, which is filmed at exactly the same time, was filmed on the Canon 6D. Exactly the same setting, the same ISO, same f-stop, a nice neutral color profile inside of the camera. But basically we put the Kelvin completely wrong. The white balance within the 6D, we put up to 10,000, which added this horrible warm look to it. We look at this one, it looks nice and natural, neutral. Go back to the 6D footage, doesn't look very nice at all. So we're gonna do the same trick. We're gonna go to the white balance selection tool. 
we know that the wall behind was white so we can literally just click that wall and straight away it takes away that horrible yellow hue and now switching back and forth with the Sony FS700 footage and the Canon footage it looks more natural now it doesn't look so jarring doesn't look so yellow but now we're getting on to the time of actual color correction so the white balance can really help but then color correction has to come into it as well i said this isn't really a color correction tutorial it's just about white balance but basically if we have a quick little play now between these two shots so this is what you would do before you start color grading you want to make sure that your whole timeline or your all your footage is color corrected correctly your highlights are all right your darks are okay and everything is nice and neutral so when you start grading it everything is consistent so that's basically what color correction is you're making everything consistent between every single shot so for instance on this one to this one we can see that the sony fs 700 footage is slightly cooler and this footage of the 60 is still slightly too warm so we can just keep playing around basically and then we're just gonna maybe add a bit more blue into it to take out that warmth switch between back and forth again as you can see we're almost getting there now the greens are slightly off but we can basically now switch between one camera and another camera and it doesn't feel as jarring as it did before which was basically this which is a big big difference <laughs> so once we then got the correct white balance between our different cameras and all our different shots we can then go in and actually do our color correction which would be for instance here we would pull down those blacks just a little bit so they're almost or hitting this zero line here we can pull up the whites just to get a little bit more exposure into this shot add a nice bit of contrast just to really make it pop and stand out off the camera might want to just pop up those shadows just a tiny bit and bring back a little bit of detail in those highlights you might want to add just a little bit of saturation just to make him pop a little bit more and then we've got a nice looking shot and there we have it as simple as that we can get the correct white balance with one click of the button inside of premiere pro hopefully you guys are going to go off and use that simple simple feature in premiere pro and it's going to save you in the future because i can tell you for now it has saved me endless amounts of time when you've got the wrong white balance Ah, it's just horrible it's not nice to see so hopefully it's going to save you because i know it saved me many many times if you've enjoyed this video please give it a big fat thumbs up and if you want me to do more tutorials like this or reviews let me know in the comment section down below what you want me to talk about next and next video i'm actually going to be talking about widescreen bars the anamorphic widescreen bars to make your footage look even more cinematic the simple ways of adding widescreen bars to your footage so that's coming up next Thank you for watching. I will now leave you guys with those three very important things, which are, as always, stay happy, stay positive, stay awesome. Goodbye.